What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we are doing two koi surgeries. So this is going to be a really interesting and informative video. So make sure you stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. As always, check out the links in the description and make sure you check out our website. If you want, go and grab a t-shirt off the website. We are now, we now have the t-shirts for sale if you want one, so go check that out. As I said, today we are gonna be doing some koi surgery. It is gonna be a really interesting and informative video. We are gonna be operating on two fish. The first fish we do has some minor injuries and the second fish is a little bit more severe. It's got quite a big infection going on. So if you are squeamish, then this probably isn't the video for you and there will probably be a bit of graphic images as well. But we are doing this to make sure the koi, the fish has the best chance of survival and can repair to full health again. So we are just intervening to make sure the fish can survive and do its best and have its best life. So generally I say a lot of the time it's best to observe the fish, make sure, see if the fish can survive itself, see if it can heal itself with good water quality, good food, etc. But unfortunately these fish have had quite a knock and that infection has come on quite quickly so we do need to intervene to sort them out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all the videos on the screen for you now. So we've got two fish. The second one is definitely quite an interesting one. And the first one is slightly minor. So do make sure you watch to the end. As I said, they are quite graphic images. So if you don't wanna see that, then click off the video. But I think it's gonna be a really informative video that we don't often get to see. And is people generally don't post these kind of videos because maybe they think they're gonna get some hate or people are gonna hate on it because it's quite, quite a thing to observe and quite a thing to see but I feel like it's really important to bring these pieces of information and videos to you guys so you can really see the full aquatic hobby and everything that's involved. So without further ado I'm going to stop babbling on and I'm going to get those videos on the screen for you now. So here we have the majority of the medications and ointments that we're going to be using for this fish or these two fish I should say. So we've got some sensitive, we've got some propolis, some wound cleaner and some potassium permanganate. Here we've just got the potassium permanganate mixed up in some fresh water and we are just using some cotton buds so we can easily apply it to the fish. We've got some koi sedative in this bowl of fresh water here from the pond that the fish is coming from. Nicely mixed up and pre-aerated. So this is the first shower that we are going to be treating. We are just slowly knocking it out in the bowl. We touch it and turn it over to make sure it is completely out so that we can apply the treatment safely and successfully without stressing the fish out. You can see that the fish isn't too red so it is not too stressed out. There's a little bump on the pectoral fin and one slightly above the eye where obviously the fish has knocked itself during potential feeding or potentially some spawning activity. So what we'll do is we will remove the fish from the water as you can see, apply some of the potassium permanganate solution onto the wounds which clears up any organic matter, also kills any bacteria and sterilizes the general area. Now we have also applied that to the eye as well as the pectoral muscular area. So now the wound is nice and clean and we can put the fish back into the water. So after we've done this, we've sterilized and cleaned the wound and made sure any dead tissue or dead matter like algae, etc., has been removed or sterilized from the wound. We will then move on to the next step. Now, the next step is applying a little bit of propolis to the area. Now, propolis also has some antibacterial properties and it is a nice, natural, non-harmful, non-chemical medication to add to the fish. You can just see the muscular area here is slightly raw and then we add this propolis on and then blow it dry so it creates a little barrier between the fish and the water. 
Now we are finally applying some aura adhesive powder, which just gives us a little bit of a sealer and a further barrier to prevent any new bacteria or infection coming in, allowing the fish to have a more chance of survival and a fight against this infection. We can see here now the fish is slowly coming round and it is added to some fresh water without sedative and then we simply put it back into the pond with the rest of its pals. So now we are doing the second fish which has quite a more severe infection and a severe wound. As I mentioned in the intro if you are squeamish or you don't like to see some slightly graphic things then please skip to the end or click off the video. So what we will do we net the fish up, we place it into the koi bowl with the sedative and then slowly the fish will keel over and it will go to sleep basically. We will still see gill movement, we will still see muscle movement, but that is absolutely normal for the fish to respond to, but the fish is knocked out. We will then add some paper towel, some clean paper towel into a koi bowl so we can safely treat this koi without any problems arising. So these paper towels are slightly damp, we're gonna dab off the area squeeze out or remove any of the pus you can see the fish is reacting its muscles are reacting to this but the fish is knocked out otherwise it would be flapping everywhere and going crazy we make sure to dry off the area remove any excess moisture and remove any of that poison pus and contamination from underneath the scale pocket we can still see that the fish is still breathing but it is not showing any adverse reaction to this we then are applying a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. This cleans up the area and removes any living matter and it helps sterilize the area. We didn't use that on the previous fish because the wound and infection wasn't so severe. So we have just dabbed that off now and let it go in to the scale pockets. We are also adding some potassium permanganate, that same solution we used on the first fish, as you can see here to make sure we really clean up inside those scale pockets, really get rid of that bacteria and make sure the wound is as clean as possible so the fish has as best chance as possible at survival. We can really see there is quite a big area of infection behind the scales where potentially the fish has knocked itself and it has caused bacteria to be able to enter through the dermis and the epidermis of the fish causing those scales to lift up. As you can see, we also removed a dead scale if there are any dry or dead scales we make sure to remove these from the fish because they will only delay and inhibit the healing process after that we apply apply some more natural propolis get it right under that scale pocket area make sure that it is worked into the fish so it has the best chance of survival now this is at propolis is actually made by bees so it is a natural occurring substance we apply that to the total area make sure it is worked in and then finally we've got some or adhesive powder to create that barrier for the, from the fish and from the environment it's living in making sure no algae no bacteria can get into the wound and the fish can have the best chance possible at recovery so we just dab that on make sure it slightly dries out a little bit there you can see the bottle of or adhesive covered in a little bit of propolis and the fish you can see it's still reactive, the gills are still moving. So we are now applying a little bit of wound sealer. We didn't have any wound sealer spray, but this wound sealer works into the or adhesive powder and creates a really nice barrier against the fish and the water. And then now we will just take that fish, we will add it back into a fresh bowl of water. You can see it is starting to wake up. So we add it back into the fresh bowl of water and you can actually see the other shower that is fully awake from the previous operation. Now the fish is slowly starting to wake up and then we will add it back into the pond and it will have a really good chance at fighting that infection now we have intervened and provided it with some extra care. So as I said that was some quite graphic images and that surgery was successful and it went down really well with no hiccups the fish went both went back into the pond and they looked absolutely fine also i've been informed that the next day they were up and feeding so that is really great news and they recovered nicely from the surgery which is amazing news i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it informative if you have got any questions feel free to drop them down below 
please no hate this was for the in the best interest of the fish and we did have to intervene to give the fish the best life they could and the best success that we could give them if, you, if you've got any further tips or knowledge that you want to let me know how we could improve this further please let me know down below as always i hope you enjoyed this video remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping